happy to bring Tommy on. He's been a good friend of mine for a long time. Even even when he was down at Auburn, we we uh, used to go on some trips together. And uh, he's now going to run for the Senate. And I guess my I got two questions for him for sure. If people want to call in, they can. I think Tommy knows that he's listening to it. He the, uh, there's an audience listening to him on this show that uh, he's going to have to dig for votes. And I think he can get votes, uh, but he's got to dig for them. Uh, Tommy, uh, thank you for being on. Uh, is there any particular reason that you decided to do this? Well, well, I've, uh, you know, I'm American. And my, I grew up in a military family. My dad died on active duty, fought in World War II. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned. I'm really concerned. Uh, used to be really concerned for our grandkids and thought, hey, this this country's changing so quick. You know, I don't know where it's going. And now it's moving to the left so fast that, uh, I mean, we've got some crazy ideas. We've got people that want to change this country and transform it to something that we as true Americans don't understand. So, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've done my career in coaching. I've coached 40 years. I've traveled the country. I've actually had a job, and that's a little bit different for a lot most of our politicians in Washington. Most of them are career politicians. I don't want to be a career politician. I want to go up and help the state of Alabama. I chose to move back here uh, after going out and doing my duty in terms of coaching other places. And I want to make a make a difference. And everybody says, well, how can you make a difference? Well, you can go up there and raise your voice and not be the politician that, that's really built up of lawyers and stuff. In our Constitution, our founding fathers wanted farmers, construction workers, educators, people to be in our our Congress, and know the different ideas all across the country, and and build it, keep continuing to build this country. Well, we've 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 turned into a, a country of politicians, and look where we're going. We are headed straight down. And if it wasn't for uh, President Donald J. Trump, I don't know where we'd be today. Because uh, I think I think God brought him to us, and gave us the opportunity to have somebody just take the gloves off, start swinging, try to run these people back in their holes, and uh, he's fighting them hard. Uh, but he's made a lot of different things in there. I want to go to Washington to help him. I want to bring Christian values back to this state and country. Uh, and if we don't do that, we're going to lose this country, and we're going to lose it in a quick way. I don't know how much you know politicking or how much information you want to talk about about your opponents, Bradley Byrne, who ran for governor and uh, is strong in South Alabama and a pretty good, you know, veteran politician is. Probably going to be your competition. Any, any any thoughts there? Well, you know, I don't know Bradley Byrne. Uh, I, I know that, uh, you know, he's been basically in politics all his life. I call them swamp dwellers. You know, they just want to live off of, uh, you know, making, making government money. And, uh, and he's probably a great guy. But uh, I'm posing a different uh, type of personality. Somebody that's gone out, he understands people in the homes. And I've been in the rich home, poor homes, middle class homes. I see how people live. I see what people need, uh, especially in the state of Alabama. It's, and, uh, you know, I, I, again, I don't want to be a fair politician. I want to go up and help and speak my voice. And everybody says, well, you'll just be a first year guy, wasn't it? Uh, everybody knows me and knows any coach is going to make a difference in terms of raising their voice and making sure that they can try to Communicate and bring people together. Yeah, leader. That's what we've always done as coaches, and I guarantee we can make a difference. But uh, I'm not going there to make a living. I don't need a paycheck. Uh, I don't have to do this. I want to do public service to help this state, and this country. Again, we need people up there that will yeah. support our constitution, our Christian value, values, and President Trump. And if we, well, number one thing, we got to get him reelected. And, and you know, if we don't, this transformation that was coming. And in the previous administration, it's going to go back to the way it was, and it's going to go straight downhill. Your taxes are going to double. Uh, it, you know, it just it, it just scares me to see that. You know, we're we're trying to be politically correct, and uh, there's a double standard. You know, we can't pray in schools, but we've got a certain religion that's coming to this country, and they can pray five times a day in our schools in ten states now, five times a day in our schools without repercussions. But if we say the Lord's Prayer, you know, we get suspended, our kids get sent home. That's wrong. That's going to change. Send me to Washington. I can guarantee you one thing. Uh, if if I can get it changed, it'll get changed. Somebody's got to start speaking up for the American people because this political correct and the double standard has got to change if we're going to
continue our ways of living free in the best country in this world. Uh, no doubt we got some calls lined up. Coaches, Barry, I wanted to ask you, do you think you're, and I think you will, uh, your background from, from coaching can really help you because you've had to deal uh, and go in homes of all different types of people, and, and you've seen the needs of the people because uh, through recruiting, uh, through your coaching, uh, you've seen it all. I got to think that will be uh, a huge help if you get elected up there, wouldn't it, Coach? Well, you, you got to communicate, and you got to sell yourself. You know, I used to tell my coaches, you know, when, we're, when I was at Texas Tech or Ole Miss or Auburn or Cincinnati or Miami, when you go out, you got to sell yourself first, not your university. Same thing, you go to Washington D.C. People got to hear you. They got to believe you believe in what you're talking about if you go to the Congress, and then you got to sell them on ideas. And you can't go up there and keep your mouth shut. I mean, you got to go go swing. And again, that's what Donald Trump did. And now he's got a bigger stick to swing. But I'm going to tell you what, uh, you know, what he's done in two year period is amazing, and we need to continue to back him and put people that will back him uh, in that scenario. Uh, it's just, uh, it's mind boggling. People have got to wake up and see what's going on because we are digressing every day in a lot of ideas. We've got to get education back. In. Our education is 37th in the world, and we spend millions and billions of dollars on our education in this country, and we're 37th in the world. And we wonder what's, what's going on with family and Values and you know, our kids have to be educated. We've got to get back to hard nosed, being respectable, uh, building self respect, building discipline. You know, the, the left, the socialist left, the only thing that they're selling is to our millennials is it's a war on work. They don't want them to work. I mean, they want to say, the government will take care of you. You don't have to work. I'm going to tell you something. That will go downhill so quick. It's just amazing that some of our kids are listening to that. But I've seen these liberal campuses all over the country, and they're learning that. But, you know, after they get out of school, hopefully they change their ways and really learn the ways of Americans and how this country was built. And uh, that's something that I've seen, and that's something I need to uh, pass along to our people in Congress. They need to be very vocal in some way. Coach, do you mind taking a couple phone calls? <laughs> sure. All right, yeah. uh, James, bring Tom in. I get to Taco Costa Hotline. Good morning, <laughs> Tom. You're with Coach Tupperville. What you got? Good morning, Barry. Good morning, Coach Sanderson. And go, good morning, Coach uh, Tuberville. And thank good you morning. for letting us ask you questions. Sure. Uh, I was going to tell you, uh, don't worry about being a coach. Uh, I think that more qualifies you than 99% of the jackasses is up there right now. So, uh, and, and I will point out that, uh, uh, Coach Tom Osborne uh, served as a senator, and, and, and he did a fantastic job when he was in the Senate. You're exactly right. As a matter of fact, I've spoke to Coach Osborne several times over the years. He actually went to Congress, was in the House for, I think, four, four or six years. He told me it's just, the big thing there that you'll learn very quickly is everything moves at a snail's pace. You know, they can't get anything done up there. But we got to put more people up there that understand if you can't communicate, you can't sell, you're not going to get anything done. And uh, so you're exactly right. Coach Osmond is a good friend, good guy, and uh, served their country well, and not just coaching, but also in, in the House of Representatives. Coach, I, the, the thing that I wanted to say to you, though, is it's not really a question because my political views, I, I wouldn't dare put you on the spot. But I, I want to tell you this. Are you ready for what the Dem – if you win the uh, primary, are you ready to go through that crowd that that George Soros group and all those low-bred Democrats will attack you and your family? Are you ready for all that? It's unmerciful what good people have to go through to be elected. I'm going to hang up and listen to your response to that, okay? All right. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's a great question. And, again, this is not a uh, spur of the moment but decision. My wife and I and family, we sat down and talked about it. We prayed about it. We know what's coming. We know what's coming from both sides, even in the primary. Uh, you know, they're going to come after you, and, and uh, especially if you, 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 you look like you're a strong candidate. So we're ready for that. You know, all you can do is pray and, and uh, work your way through it. People, people will bring every little thing up. They're going to bring it up. They're going to make it up. They, they'll make things up, and, and for un, unfortunately, some people believe that. But 
you know, I think over the state of Alabama, I've been over many, many times as Wimp has done the same thing, traveling and recruiting. He gets to know so many people. I think most people that really know me that are going to go, will tell other people, hey, don't believe that. I mean, don't believe what you're listening here because these people are just trying to tear him down. Uh, so, yeah, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough for the next year and a half if I get in the general election and even through this primary. So, uh, you know, you just got to lean on your beliefs and faith and fight hard and uh, know that you're fighting for the right thing. You're fighting, you're fighting for the freedom of our country. You're fighting for moral values, Christian values, and you're fighting for the state. And, uh, hey, I'm all in on that, I'm telling you. All right, uh, we're going to get back to the Taco Costa hotline, James. Let's get Lance in. Good morning, Lance. You're on with Coach Tuberville. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Lance. Uh, Coach Tuberville, uh, I wanted to ask you, now you're going to be a freshman in uh, in Congress if you're elected there, but how do you go about getting your agenda heard if you're just coming in and you know uh, the appointments made for different areas, you know, but how do you go about that, getting your agenda heard when you go in there? Well, first of all, they got to believe you're coming in for the right reasons. And again, uh, you know, I, I've been fortunate in my life, Lance, that I've made enough money where I don't have to even go, even go up and take a paycheck. Uh, yeah, I don't right. need any lobbyist money. I don't want any of that stuff. I'm going to go up and sell the fact, you know, we're a huge agricultural state. That's our number one commodity in this state. We have trees. We have livestock, chickens, I think we have beaches, ports. We've got a lot of things to sell. But the big thing is our armed forces in this state. You know, we got bases here that bring in millions and billions of dollars. So supporting armed services, obviously, you know, if you're going to be on a couple of committees, maybe the agricultural committee, but you got to sell, first of all, education. If we don't change education in this country and get the liberal agenda out of our high schools and colleges, it doesn't make any difference what we take to Washington, D.C. We've got to get back to teaching Christian moral values. I remember in the 60s, they took prayer out of the church. When they did that, we have gone downhill. And again, as I said earlier, some religions can pray in our schools. I mean, it's a double standard. But if we say the Lord's Prayer, they'll send their kids home. That's wrong. And they're going to hear me. Now, you can ask to be on the floor of the Senate and make your speech. And, you know, they have it live on C-SPAN and all that. And most of the guys are not even in there are women. But you're going to hear me speak, and you're going to hear me speak loud. Man, so if we don't change, if we don't start changing things and not worry about hurting people's feelings, being politi- politically correct, we are going yes. downhill so fast that it's just going to be amazing to see the transformation. But number one, again, got to get Donald Trump back in there. If we don't, the war is over. They win. Thanks, Lance. Uh, all right, Dad, go ahead. Um, as far as going through the state, now, I, you know, I know you've been a little bit more mid-Alabama, not South Alabama, because of, of Auburn. Uh, do you have a plan as far as going through Huntsville and Florence and over into East Alabama? And I, I think it, I think a radio show like this, and I'll have you on any time you want to be on, it goes to into Tuscaloosa where, you know, you would think that you, you, you'll struggle, but – and you've done a good job here this morning of talking about things you need to talk about, but uh, are you pretty well organized as far as going through the state? Yeah, I went for 67 counties in this state. We're getting leaders in each county. We're going to win this on the grassroots. We're going not going to just win it in Birmingham or Mobile or, or Montgomery or, or Huntsville. We've we got to go to all areas. And you know me, I can talk to anybody. You know, and, and, and this is about the entire state. This is about everybody understanding what's going on in our in our country and why it's going on. I mean, we can all see it on television, but only one or two people can go up there and speak for the state. And so I'm going to try to convince, and I think I can, uh, everybody, whether Auburn fans or Alabama fans, I know a lot of people say, why should I vote for you? My humorous answer is, it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have Nick Saban. I ran all that stuff off. <laughs> but, but that being said, uh, I think people look through this, hey, this this is not a game here. Uh, this is life. And, folks, we are on the balance of going one way or the other. And, again, it all starts with our president. He needs help. I mean, he's fighting. He's fighting up there with a stick. I mean, and he's got Republicans and Democrats coming after him because he's changing their way of life because they've had their big party up there forever. And, uh, you know, 
they, they've had their fix. I'm, I'm not an ego guy. So I'm going to go around the state and say, hey, listen, I'm representing you, and I'm going to do what you want to. When Doug Jones went up and voted against Brett Kavanaugh uh, for Supreme Court Justice, he's their Democratic senator that I'm, on, I'm trying to replace. When he did that, uh, he told the people of Alabama, I don't care what you want to do. Eighty percent of the people in the state wanted him confirmed. He voted the other way. He's a party line man. I mean, and he that's all he wants to do. He wants to just stay up there and be in the club. Hey, I've been on the mountaintop. I've been in all the big stadiums and television. And he, this is not an ego trip for me. Uh, I'm an American. I want to help as an American, as a person from Alabama. They say I'm a carpetbagger. You know, I hadn't lived here all my life. Sure, I had. You know, I actually had to go out and get a job. But for 20 years, you know, I've I've had homes here, farm here, property paid all kind. I paid more taxes than any of these guys I'm running against combined uh, here in the state, state, federal, local school taxes. So I think people understand me, but I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna tell them face to face, you know, what I believe in. And uh, if they'll come to some of our rallies and listen, I think they'll be be quite impressed. I'm, I'm not a, just a football coach. I love this country, and I think and I know that I can help change it and make this state better. And I make the country better by bringing people together because there's a hundred people up there, and I don't see many people trying to convince others to come their way. And and, and you know they do all these backroom negotiations. But let's get out front. Let's get out front and talk about it. Let's get on the floor. I don't think I won't do that in front of American people and say, "What are we doing this for? You know, why don't we do it this way?" So again, uh, I've, I've got to get out and vote I'm, uh, and, or or sell, and that's what I like doing. I'm excited about it. It's been great. I've only been doing it three weeks, and I got ten months to the primary. And so we'll make a lot of headway. I got a great team. It's like building a football team from from the ground up. You know, your staff, uh, people that uh, again are with you every day, and then you've got people all over the state. It's a fun deal, but unfortunately, this is not about fun. This is about our way of life for for fifty, a hundred years later on, and for our kids. So I'm gonna fight hard. I'm gonna swing hard. And I know, I know the people in Alabama are going to fall behind me because i got something to sell. Uh, we're talking with Coach Tommy Tubber. Coach, one one football question before we let you go. Michael Lombardi, uh, the NFL exec, came out, very critical of uh, Gus Malzahn, very critical of his offense, very critical of his development of Jarrett Stidham. Uh, I know you've had a little bit to say about that. What, what do you think about this guy coming out and – uh, being so critical about Auburn's offense and how, how Gus develops quarterbacks. Well, it's just not Auburn. It's anybody. Why would anybody in, in the NFL come out that's not been True. on the firing line, so to speak, uh, having to deal with today's problems, uh, the offenses, the, the people that you coach against, and the players that you deal with. Uh, you know, Gus is a, is a good guy. He's a good person. My son plays quarterback at Auburn, and he and I had this conversation a couple of years ago when he retired, uh, well, not when, until when he graduated. And he was very good friends with Jared Stidham. The problem is, you know, you get these transfers coming in, they don't change overnight. You know, you got to get them from one thing to another. I mean, they've got to learn. we got all these new transfer rules where you don't have special quarterbacks. They're going to be moving schools, maybe once, maybe twice. And it takes, it takes four good years to transform a quarterback to what you want to do. You can't do it in two, probably even three. And it just takes a while. But it's really unfair to Gus. It's really unfair to anybody, whether it's Nick or, or Kirby Smart. Some some guy come out that really don't know the situation, don't know how tough this conference is. My God, I'd hate to coach offense in this league now with a defensive player that, that's out there. But uh, Gus doesn't have to prove anything to anybody. Obviously, he knows he's got to win games. He's had some real good offenses. He's had some offenses. But we've all been in that situation. So, it's just unfair for somebody like that to throw throw errors at a, at a guy that really doesn't even know and doesn't know the situation. Jared Stidham, good quarterback. I tried to recruit him when I was at Texas Tech, and uh, uh, he got all kind of credentials. But he's going to have to learn. He's going to get better. His fundamentals going to get better, and it might have had a little bit something to do with offense, but it's more about transferring and about having plenty of enough time to coach the young man in terms of making him better every day. All right, Tommy, Tommy, we appreciate you being on. We'll have you on from time to time if you'd like to be on. I'm sure you would. So uh, I'll see you. I'll see you down the road somewhere. I how about it. Uh, get, how about getting uh, Wimp and Sonny out uh, campaigning for you, Tommy? Would that be a help? Would that help you or hurt you? I think. I hurt him. I hurt him. <laughs> well, I've known them boys a long time. No, I'd help. 
you know, people really respect Wimp and Sonny and, and uh, you know, everybody that we've hung around with coaches over a lifetime. But uh, no, it'd be awesome. But I appreciate you letting me up and letting me be on. If you want to go to my website, people listen, go to TommyForSenate.com. It's a, you know, we're building it every day. It's going to be a little bit of sports, a little bit of mostly politics and what I believe in and, and uh, you know, pass it to other people. And I think it'd be, be good information as we go through this campaign and, and see, see how it's going. And uh, we're going to win this thing. We're going to win it. And I got great support. Actually, the lead in the first moment came out, and I hadn't even been out campaigning. So uh, I don't lose leads very often. So uh, we're going to go out, stick the ground, and hit it hard running and tell the state of Alabama we've got a great place. But we've got to save this country. Great stuff, Coach. Appreciate hey, you. Hey, Tommy. Appreciate it.